And in this section, we're going to talk about how businesses integrate automation and artificial intelligence, or AI, and machine learning to increase value for consumers. Now, we've seen movies like The Terminator or Blade Runner and cartoons like The Jetsons. And in each of these examples, we picture a futuristic world where there are flying cars and, and robots that clean your house. But if we think about it, that future is now. We have robots like Roomba that clean your floors. Some people even name their Roomba. Now, the good news is we're not sending robots back in time to change the trajectory of the future. So we don't live in that sort of dystopian world. But we are increasingly integrating technology in everyday life. So to start, let's do an example. You've probably seen a CAPTCHA before. You're going to go log in on social media, and suddenly this box pops up, and it tells you to click on all the squares that show a traffic light. But don't click on any squares that don't have a traffic light. And you're sweating because you're looking at the picture, and there's a little bit of a traffic light on one of the boxes, but you're not sure if it, if it should be clicked. Don't panic. Let's talk about what a CAPTCHA is actually doing, and by providing information, what you're doing in the world of CAPTCHAs. So let's do a quick example of a CAPTCHA. We'll use a familiar face to illustrate this point. So there's me. And let's say the instructions say to select all squares with my face. Well, clearly, there are two squares here. Now, you might get a little nervous because that square in the top left-hand corner has my forehead. It's a big forehead. And you don't know if you should click it or you shouldn't. But here's what's really happening. When you click on my face, when you click on those boxes, you're training artificial intelligence what a human face looks like. And by not clicking on the other boxes, you're helping that artificial intelligence learn what a human face is and what a human face isn't. So what are CAPTCHAs and where do they come from? Well, the CAPTCHA was created at Carnegie Mellon University in 2000. And CAPTCHA is an acronym that stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. It's a pretty clever name, but it's easier just to call it a CAPTCHA. Now, at that time in 2000, it was possible for scammers to, to create a program that could sign up for accounts quickly and efficiently and in large numbers, which is clearly a problem. Now, CAPTCHAs of today exist in many forms, but they're becoming more difficult because computer software has become more advanced. And CAPTCHAs must be hard for a computer to figure out, but easy for humans. In some countries, bad actors will hire human beings just to get past the CAPTCHA portion of signing up for something. So when we talk about this technology, a word that often comes up is automation. And that's the process by which technology replaces tasks typically performed by humans without the need for human engagement or intervention. A good example of this are windshield wipers or car lights that turn on as soon as rain is detected. A related term is artificial intelligence, or AI. And artificial intelligence refers to, to technology that is, is designed to mimic the decision-making processes of humans, which includes taking in new information, analyzing or making sense of that information, and then making choices or engaging in behaviors as a function of that analyzed information. So let's think about an example of artificial intelligence. When we think about Tesla, we think about Elon Musk and electric vehicles. But behind the magic of a Tesla is an advanced autopilot feature powered by next generation AI. Here are the broad strokes of the three key pieces of the architecture. First is data collection. Teslas access and compile data through their neural network that informs perception control, object detection, and so much more. For example, Teslas feature a 360-degree camera system. So a set of eight cameras surround the vehicle to compile visual data. That's so much more than the human eye can see. Now, the second component is data processing. Over 1 million vehicles provide the company with data that the AI can now auto-label, creating annotations of everything from cars to street signs, road conditions, stoplights, and more. Now, this continues to improve not just Tesla's current fleet, but also their future fleet of cars. And the third component is planning. Finally, the AI system can, can continue to plan explicit control of steering and acceleration, updating its existing systems, and, and then they deploy that to each Tesla, basically giving each Tesla a, a software upgrade, just like your phone. So let's review. Data collection, data processing, and planning. The data collection comes in the form of that vision, those cameras surrounding the Tesla. Then that data is processed using the neural net planner. And finally, the systems are updated. The planning changes, which affects steering and acceleration. 
That's how Tesla relies on AI to update that driving feature. So another related concept is machine learning. Now, machine learning is related to artificial intelligence, but machine learning is a field of study in which a computer learns from data, recognizes patterns, and updates its understanding of the world as existing models are tested and new information or data is obtained. We can use the streaming platforms of Spotify and Netflix as examples. Now, they both use algorithms that combine AI, machine learning, and big data to suggest items based on a user's previous behavior. This function is called collaborative filtering. So the more you use Netflix and the more you use Spotify, the more individualized your recommendations become, resulting in content that's specifically unique to you in comparison to other users. So for example, on Netflix, they can change the thumbnail for a particular movie or TV show based on your individual characteristics. That can be a good thing, but it also got the company in a little bit of trouble. So what they were doing was actually featuring characters and, and characters of a particular race who maybe didn't even have a prominent role in the movie or television show based on the race or ethnic identification of the viewer. So again, you can see how using data and using technology in this way can be beneficial, but there are also some risks associated with it as well. Now, there are pros to using artificial intelligence and automation and machine learning. It frees up human resources for more sophisticated, difficult to automate decisions and tasks. It also permits continuous collection of data, analysis of data, and statistically informed improvements automatically. And frankly, it just makes life easier. But of course, there are downsides to this technology. There's the perception that technology is, is replacing people. For example, automatic checkouts are replacing uh, the grocery store workers at your local grocery store. Now, there are related social and political implications of this fear. There's also the problem called the black box problem of not necessarily understanding or knowing how machine learning has arrived at a particular suggestion or decision. Another issue is called coded bias, and that's the inability for some artificial intelligence to recognize persons of color. And the reason for that is that the training images, the images used to train the artificial intelligence, the set didn't include enough photos of persons of color. In fact, in 2018, the Gender Shades Project analyzed three gender classification algorithms that were developed by Microsoft, IBM, and others. And while the creators say that the facial recognition is around 90% accurate, unfortunately, when it's used on darker-skinned females, that error rate jumps significantly. Fortunately, IBM and Microsoft both did respond by improving their platforms. Now, you may have seen the videos of the Boston Dynamics robots doing parkour. And if so, you can see that modern technology is evolving faster than we could have ever predicted. And with that comes this concern that, that machines are becoming smarter than the humans who program them. This is no longer science fiction, but with proper management and controls, well, this should remain a distant possibility. Managing information is a critical part of running a business, particularly as your business grows larger and has massive amounts of data coming in from multiple directions. Thankfully, Technological advances help us collect, sort, and analyze that data more easily. And seeing how this function fits into the big picture is critical. There is no reason why everyone shouldn't have access to the very best education. Welcome to Calculus One. To introduction to astronomy. The introduction to philosophy. To statistics. Microeconomics. Psychology. Let's get started.